If you've already subscribed to Space Infinity, you've already seen the first set of pictures taken by NASA's mighty new telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope. The latest photographs from Webb have caused quite a stir in the scientific community, but you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Well, to understand one's improvements, you'll have to compare the present to the past. It can be difficult to understand the scope of the advancements humankind has made with the JWST in contrast to the Hubble. So here's the big deal difference between the two. Here's what all the hype is about. Hubble Space Telescope Launched in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has maintained operation in the harsh environment of space for more than 30 years, which is truly a remarkable lifespan. Hubble's eyes operate differently from Webb's because Hubble primarily sees in optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. Webb sees in infrared, Hubble is unable to see through the dusty areas of space that Webb can see through thanks to infrared. Hubble's mirror is considerably smaller than Webb's mirror. According to NASA, Webb can see further into the past than Hubble because of its greater light collecting area. James Webb Space Telescope On July 11, 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope released its first significant image, revolutionizing astronomy. Views of the same cosmic targets from the Hubble Space Telescope and Webb show how far we've come. The developments in space telescope technology since Hubble's launch more than three decades ago are represented by Webb. However, Webb is not here to compete with Hubble. It's here to adopt a fresh perspective on the cosmos. This is how the primary mirror of the James Webb Space Telescope appeared during a test deployment in March 2020. There aren't any stunning images of Webb in orbit this selfie in the mirror will have to do. The telescope uses a set of gold-plated hexagonal mirrors to view the universe in infrared light and is the focus of debate over its nomenclature. Hubble Deep Field 2012 The Hubble Ultra Deep Field was produced using Hubble Space Telescope images from 2003 and 2004 and shows a small region of space in the constellation Fornax. It was the deepest image of the universe ever captured at that time, revealing hundreds of galaxies, both close by and extremely far away, by gathering feeble light over several hours of observation. Significantly though, it has a smaller field of view. The new full-color XDF image is even more sensitive and comprises around 5,500 galaxies. The brightest galaxies are 10 billion times fainter than what the human eye can distinguish. Over the years, a number of Hubble Deep Fields have been made available by NASA and the European Space Agency. They are still stunning, but they also serve to emphasize how much more powerful Webb is in comparison. Webb's Deep Field The James Webb Space Telescope of NASA has produced the most detailed and precise infrared image of the outer reaches of the cosmos to date. Galaxy cluster SMAX 0723, which is part of Webb's first deep field, is home to thousands of galaxies, including some of the weakest infrared objects yet seen. A small sliver of the immense universe Webb's image is about the size of a grain of sand held out at arm's length. This galaxy cluster's total mass functions as a gravitational lens to magnify more distant galaxies, including some that were first observed when the universe was only a few billion years old. This deep field was captured by Webb's near-infrared camera, NearCam, which combined images collected at various wavelengths over the course of 12 and a half hours. This allowed for infrared depths that were greater than those reached by the Hubble Space Telescope's deepest fields, which took weeks to capture. And this is just the start. Longer exposures will be taken by researchers using Webb in the future, showing more of the enormous universe. In this view, the galaxy cluster SMAX 0723 is seen with a large number of additional galaxies in front of and behind it as it would have been 4.6 billion years ago. Researchers will learn a lot more about this cluster when they delve further into Webb's data. Webb's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, which monitors mid-infrared light, also captured a photograph of this field. With the help of Webb's NearCam, distant galaxies have come into clear focus. These galaxies contain tiny, weak structures, such as star clusters and hazy patterns that have never been observed previously. It took billions of years for the light from these galaxies to reach us. When observing the newest galaxies in this field, we are traveling back in time to just a billion years after the Big Bang. The universe's expansion caused the light to be bent, reaching the infrared wavelengths that Webb was made to study. The masses, ages, histories, and composition of the galaxies will soon be the subject of increased research. The prominent arcs in this field are another highlight. 
similar to how a magnifying glass warps and bends images. A galaxy's strong gravitational field has the ability to bend light beams from farther away galaxies that are behind it. As stars look brighter at shorter wavelengths, they are also recorded with noticeable diffraction spikes. Where the dust is, which is a key component of star formation and ultimately life itself, Webb's MIRI image shows a kaleidoscope of hues and highlights. Stars are present in blue galaxies, but there is minimal dust. This field's red objects are obscured by many feet of dust. There are hydrocarbons and other chemical substances in green galaxies. These kinds of data will help researchers better understand how galaxies develop, expand, merge with one another, and, in some cases, why they stop producing stars altogether. Hubble's Cosmic Cliffs View 2008 saw the publication of this Hubble image of the Carina Nebula's northwest corner. The Cosmic Cliffs are the term given to this section of the nebula. Although it's a beautiful sight to behold, Webb's view is clearer. With the aid of his infrared vision, Webb is able to see areas of star birth that Hubble was unable to. The photo, which was taken in visible light, reveals the three light-year-long pillar's apex, which is illuminated by hot, huge stars off the top of the photo. The pillar is being shaped by these stars' scorching radiation and swift winds, which are also driving new stars to form inside of it. The top of the structure is seen to be emitting streams of gas and dust. From July 24th to the 30th, 2009, Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3 captured images of the Carina Nebula. WFC-3 was mounted on Hubble during servicing Mission 4 in May 2009. Filters that isolate emission from iron, magnesium, oxygen, hydrogen, and sulfur were used to create this composite image. The Hubble servicing Mission 4 early release views include these observations of the Carina Nebula. Webb snaps Carina Nebula's cosmic cliffs. The border of the neighboring young star-forming area NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula may be seen as mountains and valleys, which is dotted with sparkling stars. The image, which was taken by NASA's brand new James Webb Space Telescope in infrared light, for the first time makes visible previously hidden zones of star birth. The Cosmic Cliffs, a supposedly three-dimensional image by Webb, shows what appear to be rocky mountains at night under the moonlight. The largest peaks in this image, which are actually the boundary of NGC 3324's massive gaseous cavity, are located around seven light years away. The cavernous area has been cut out of the nebula by intense ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds from very huge, hot, newborn stars in the center of the bubble, above the region visible in this image. The nebula's wall is being gently sculpted by the searing UV radiation from the nascent stars. Dramatic pillars rise majestically above the blazing gas wall and block this radiation. Actually, heated ionized gas and hot dust are streaming away from the nebula as a result of the relentless radiation, giving the appearance of steam rising from the celestial mountains. Individual stars and forming stellar nurseries are completely hidden in visible light images, but Webb makes them visible. Webb's sensitivity to infrared light enables it to see these objects through cosmic dust. The protostellar jets that are clearly visible in this image are released into space by some of these newborn stars. The newest sources are evident as red dots in the deepest, dustiest part of the cloud. The earliest and quickest stages of star formation are difficult to see, but Webb's remarkable sensitivity, spatial resolution, and imaging capabilities can capture these elusive events. The star formation process will be clarified by these observations of NGC 3324. Star birth spreads throughout time as a result of the cavity's erosion expanding. The bright ionized rim steadily pushes into the gas and dust of the nebula. The increasing pressure will cause any unstable material that the rim comes in contact with to collapse and create new stars. Throughout the years, we have grown accustomed to viewing breathtaking photographs of the universe. And at first glance, these new ones may not appear to be all that different. The technological advancements are not immediately apparent until they are placed side by side with pre-existing photos. What are your thoughts on the differences of the Webb Telescope and the Hubble Telescope? Let us know what you think in the comments. After you've smacked that like button, head to the Space Infinity Archive or click on this video right now.